Hey, so how are you all, uh, how are you all doing? Welcome to another uh, Embedded Hour. Can you believe it's actually, actually, oh, I can't even get myself on the camera now. So this has been sort of uh, the 12th one, actually. So we've had uh, we've had 12 of these previously. So, so, we've, so we've been going for nearly a year now, which means lockdown has been going on a little longer than perhaps we might have uh, we might have thought over the COVID situation. Uh, this week we've got a we've got a great uh, a great guest to come and talk to us about his career and and his involvement in education. Before before I do that, there's a couple of things uh, I would uh, like to mention. So I've got a couple of uh, webinars coming up. So next week. I have a webinar coming up on the uh, basis board. So how to use uh, the basis three, the digital basis three board. And we're gonna create on that, we're gonna create the traditional sort of Pong type uh, game on that. And, and to do that, we're gonna really use everything. So we're gonna be using the micro, we're gonna be using the microblade, some HLS, some RTL, uh, and we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of good fun. It's gonna be, there's gonna be a little bit of a twist on it. So I'll pop the, uh, I'll pop the link to sign up in the chat, see if anybody's interested. Uh, you Obviously you don't, while it's targeted around a basis board, if you've got a, uh, any sort of Xylee 7 series board, uh, you'll be, you can follow along and at least at least learn a little bit about HLS and how to create microblade systems and, and, and get images on TV screens and such like. So hopefully it should be, uh, it should be a lot of fun. So like I say, uh, I will uh, pop that in the chat. We've also been, you also might have seen that on my, uh, on my blogs that we've been designing this custom board for the last few weeks as part of the, uh, as part of the book. That we're releasing, so we now have a we now have a link for the uh, for the for the for the pre-order of the book. Uh, we're just having some discussions with the publisher about uh, actually getting the data correct that's on that link. So once that link's up and running, I'll share it. Uh, but if you're interested, because we've mentioned this board a few times now in the uh, in the blog uh, in in these um, in these sessions. So if you're interested, uh, as of today, we've actually put the schematics uh, out there as a, as a PDF. So they're on my uh, they're on the uh, Duvo blog channel. And you can go take a look at the schematics in PDF format and, and take a look at them. And long, longer term, our plan is to make every, we're going to have a dedicated website to it. So longer term, we're going to put all of the schematics. We're actually going to give you, so we're going to actually give you all the Altium source as well. So all the, all the actual source schematics and source layouts and everything. So you can take it and run with it. But as an interim, as an interim point, we've, uh, we've just put all the schematics on the, uh, on the drive there. So without further ado, actually this week, I'm going to ask Jim to come and join us and turn on his mic and camera and we'll, uh, and we'll, and we'll get started uh, with, uh, with our conversation. I'm going, to stop sharing, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. If you get any questions and comments, please, uh, please as we go through, please put them in the, uh, in the chat uh, and then we'll, then we'll be good to go. So Jim, so welcome, welcome and thank you very much for, uh, for coming along. I know, I know you've, uh, you've, you've attended a few of these and you've chatted a bit. And, you know, you've had a really, you know, we were just chatting before we started, you know, you've had a really great career and now you're a teacher. <laughs> so, so you've been, you've been an engineer and now, you, now you're an educator and that's, that's really great. But tell us a little bit before we start talking about your, uh, your sort of, you know, your career as a teacher and the mechatronics stuff that you're doing and the fire breathing dragons and the, all the cool robots you've got behind us. But tell us a little bit about, first about your sort of, what was your journey? What you know? What is your career journey when you started out as a as a young engineer? To you worked for Raytheon for twenty, it's like Xilinx for twenty five years. So tell us a little bit about that journey. All right. So happy to be here. I'm I'm kind of excited. This this should be this should be fun. Um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you know, what's interesting is that that you know I never I never really thought about when I was younger. You know, engineering. I, I mean, I had electronic set when I was was younger but but didn't do a lot of I didn't do a lot of engineering and, and think about engineering and I didn't think that that's what I wanted to do as a career I obviously I wanted to be a marine biologist that's that's what I wanted to be when I grew up um, but uh, so how but about, as, how, how's that leap from marine biologist to engineer then no, it's interesting. I mean, my first my first year my first year at college, I was actually declared as a marine biologist and and was 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 kind of going that direction. So, so um, you, actually, you actually signed up as a major for that then, marine? I, I did. I did. Um, I had you know I had gotten certified to to scuba dive. My sister dived. We uh, we we went and you know did some did some diving down in Florida and and uh, I you know, I just, I like was really just kind of in love with that idea. Um, but, uh, when I was, when I was at school, um, that, that first, first two years, really, I, I you know, 
when, when people say they went to, you know, got their degree in four years, you know, I think, oh, great. You know, uh, me, I took me like six years to, to get my degree eventually. But, but uh, that, that first year, um, I had some friends that were in the engineering department and uh, I, I went to some seminars and I actually ended up um, uh, talking to a number of the professors and it kind of started really intriguing me. And, and they actually kind of talked about how maybe you could bridge that gap where like engineering, there's lots of engineering that goes into marine biology, right? It's like, you got to have submarines. Somebody's got to build the submarines. Um, you know, so, all kinds I mean, of technology. Woods Hole's, a, Woods Hole's quite famous for, for a lot of things. And I've used, I've used some of their equations. I'm just trying to remember what it is. I think it's to, to do with, uh, is it thermistors or something like that? I can't, I can't remember. But I, I remember coming across Woods Hole uh, for quite a few uh, applications. Yeah. No, actually, and actually, I, oh, I, you know, I used to have a picture of a little submarine uh, that, uh, that, that I always had stuck up to think about. And, and actually that was one of the places I was really trying to get a job at when I, when I graduated, of course, in the nineties, when I graduated, you know, life was, life was terrible uh, as far as, as far as engineering went and, and, and the economy was just in shambles. And so it was, it was kind of tough, but so, so yeah, so I, so I, so got an engineering, electric engineering degree. Um, and my first, my first, like real job as an engineer was working at Beehive Telephone. And this was like right on the Utah, Nevada border. And they were, it was a small company, like, like <laughs> six, seven engineers and, uh, and then a few other, few other folks. And uh, my job there was to actually build uh, some hardware, basically, basically a big memory array, um, just RAM memory array that we built uh, to, uh, connect to their Harris switches. Um, they just had a parallel port. And so my job was to build that hardware and then write code assembly and, and, and C to basically time all the on and off hook, uh, of the phone, right? We, you know, all we could tell was, yep, someone's picked up their phone and someone's hung up their phone and we would time everything. And, um, and that was a great job. Cause you know, it forced me to, 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 to really kind of exercise my embedded, um, technology, really understanding, you know, how, how little, little state machines worked. And cause it was really simple. I mean, it was, there was no processor or anything. It was just some little state machine that would just sit there and, and, and record all the, all the uh, channels on this, on this switch. But then at the same time, if somebody like went and dug up one of our cables, the boss would come in with a hard hat and a shovel and he'd say, all right, everybody jump in the truck. We're going to go, we're going to go fix this cable. Um, and so that was, that was kind of interesting, but, uh, but, but then out of college, once I'd graduated, um, I was the, I was the IEEE chairman of our, of our chapter there at, uh, I, I went to Brigham Young University, um, in, in, in Utah and I was chapter chairman and it was my job to like help all our graduates to like find jobs. And, and, and it was funny because I was kept thinking about, you know, Hey, I, I need to get a job. Right. And so, so I, everybody else, I need to get a job. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I had been applying like everywhere, um, you know, growing up, uh, my, my father worked for a, uh, an accounting firm, worked for Ernst and Young and oh, we yeah. actually took, took some overseas assignments. And so, you know, growing up, I lived, I lived in Bogota, Colombia for till I was about five, and then we moved to Brussels, Belgium, and then then we moved back to the United States when I was about twelve. And so I kind of had a good view of the world, right? I, it, I, 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 I wanted to get out there, and so, you know, I was applying to like Siemens in South Africa. I was applying to, you know, all kinds of engineering firms in Europe. I was like all over, and nothing. Right. <laughs> Nothing. And uh, and so uh, there was a company out here in California, Amdahl. They were basically a, a, a subsidiary of Fujitsu and uh, they built mainframes, built big, big computing systems, um, you know, big banking, banking mainframes and, and things like that and uh, competed against IBM. And 
and so that was the job and, and out here in California. And I didn't really think to come out to California. I thought I'd end up back Midwest someplace. Um, and, uh, and so out I came, we moved, moved, uh, moved out here. I was married at the time. Um, one, one child and, uh, and I quickly realized that, that Amdahl was just not the place for me. Um, I had, I was I was hired on as a as a as a uh, QA technician, uh, test engineering, and so you know every day I'm showing up with my coat because we're out on the air conditioned floor, right? Um, and we're building these machines and we're testing these machines and doing some really complex, you know, timing analysis and making sure all the cables are, are 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 you know all the signals are all synced up and everything. Um, and uh, I quickly realized that it just was not the job that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> and, and, you know, I mean, you, you, you realize that you, pretty you know, quickly. Funny, you know, I, some, day, some jobs I've had, you know, you're walking on day one and you're like, what have I done here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that, and that's kind of, kind of where I was at. There were, there were engineers that had been there for, you know, 10 plus years and they were basically doing the same thing I was doing. They just were good at it, but, but I didn't see, you know, any path. So I had a friend of mine who worked at Xilinx and, uh, and I'd heard of Xilinx, um, but he said, come on over, you know, one Saturday he came, I, I came over and, and he kind of gave me a tour of the place and he showed me all their software, um, you know, all the, uh, all the early edit LCA uh, software and, you know, configuring the CLBs by hand and the, the whole bit. Really early, it must be what early nineties, mid nineties. So. Yeah, this was like ninety two, three, right? Yeah, they, really, they, they, really at the hand, you know, when you were really hand placing these things and hand rooting them, and oh, dude, that must have been so much fun. Yeah, and so you know, he showed me showed me what they were doing, and I just like I I have to get a job here. This is my dream job, because in school I'd really focused on embedded processing. We built, you know, an 8088 computer from, you know, chips all yeah. from scratch. And, uh, and, and so I was really, you know, I really enjoyed just that embedded processing, connecting up, you know, all your buses and communication and, you know, the whole bit. And, uh, and so I spent like the next month really like studying all my digital logic, you know, doing carnal maps, you know, over and over and over again, building, you know, a, you know, four or eight bit counter by, by, from scratch, you know, with, with discrete logic and stuff like that. And so, um, they had me over and that man, I was like so stressed because I really, really wanted that job. And, uh, and, 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 they had me go speak to like six engineers. I was there like all day, six engineers, pretty tough questions um, of just digital logic questions. And the manager, the manager, uh, when, when he, uh, uh, he was interviewing me, Peter Alfke, I don't know, some of, some of the people know, on the he He's like the engineering god. He is like- Yeah, how yeah. I mean, from Fairchild and then Xilinx. And he was, he was just, just, he was amazing. Yeah. And- and I was, I was just so stressed. He started asking me about, you know, well, if you had a four bit, you know, input to a, to a logic block, you know, what, you know, how, how many, how many um, combinations could you get? And it's a simple thing. It's just like, you know, you know, two to the four and that, that was the number. And I just, I just completely blanked. I just completely blanked and like completely messed up his interview. And so when he got back with the, with the engineers, he's like, well, I don't know, this guy didn't really feel like he knew his stuff. And, and everybody else to my, you know, to happily said, Oh no, no, no. He, he did really good. He was able to do this. And so, so I, so I ended up getting a job there at, uh, at, at Xilinx and, and, and basically spent my career there, spent, you know, 25 years um, at Xilinx doing all kinds of things. Yeah, I noticed when I looked up on LinkedIn, you'd been sort of you'd started out in the app, in the application sort of arena, and you'd moved across to doing some stuff with the IP cores and microblades and marketing. So you had a lot. 
But actually, Kevin actually just Kevin uh, Kevin's just popped a question in the in the question and answers bit. So he'd noticed he's obviously been cyber stalking you a little bit. He noticed you've got a patent in your name uh, from your time at uh, from your time at Xilinx. And he was just wondering if you got any sort of you know any thoughts or advice to engineers as to whether it's a good you know to get patents under their belts and was it you know was it a lot of hard work and how how did you go about how did you go about doing that? And I think it was yeah yeah that was that was actually I'm. That was fun. Um, yeah, so the the patents, I actually I actually have 10 patents. Um, oh, okay. well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, at home I've got a, a, a little wall of, of all oh, yeah, of them. I like yeah, like I've got, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, well, so so at the time, Xilinx was uh, from, a, from, you know, some memory location. So that's kind of a, a spot where where you're vulnerable because there's some data that's loading your design. And so people could actually take, you know, they could take a blank FPGA, they could, they could capture your data off your product, they could replicate your stuff, and then they could clone your system um, doing that. And so there was, there was a lot of work. Um, and this was, you know, this was late 90s, early, early 2000s. Um, and we were looking at, you know, just a lot of hardware encryption and, you know, using, using, you know, a bunch of the different, different algorithms to encrypt stuff and actually having that on the chip. And, and so if you go look at my patents, most of them are, are just really obscure ways to like turn on bits inside uh, the chip, you know, have access to carry logic to like turn on and off carry logic. If certain, certain bits aren't set, um, I can't even, I can't even hardly remember <laughs> those, those things, but absolutely patents are, patents are important. Um, you know, they always say that, that, that a patent gives you, gives you recourse, but it doesn't give you protection. Um, you know, if you're, if you're a small business and you get a patent and somebody violates your patent, it's like, sure, you can go to court, but it's, you, you have to have a million dollars. Yeah. You have to have a million dollars to defend it, but, but, but big corporations, right? If, if you have your engineers bringing in patents and getting patents, those are, those are really valuable as far as, as being able to like license technology and, and, you know, license your technology to another company to get some of their patents licensed to you and, and, and things like that. So Xilinx, yeah, went through a period where they really encouraged engineers to, 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 to do that. And uh, and work on work on these patents. So a couple of them I got by myself. A couple of them I worked with with other engineers. Um, and uh, yeah, that was that was that was kind of kind of fun. And you know, of course, it's always great. You know, you know when you're when you're at a you know party or something like yeah. Well, I you know I have ten patents. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good with the group. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good one. But uh, it's quite. I mean, that is that is quite interesting. I mean. Did, did, did you get anything? Did you think he brought you any extra recognition within Xilinx, or did you feel it was sort of you were competing against sort of? Because I would imagine sort of a technology company, they've got a lot of people filing patents quite often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, it, Xilinx took it really seriously, and so they didn't just frivolous things. People couldn't just file, you know, frivolous things. They had to actually have, have you know, some value to them. And actually, a couple of the like the 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 the. I guess the generation before the latest one, but the Vertex, the Vertex devices, they actually have some of the features of stuff that's covered in my patent is actually in real hardware today. You know, a lot of times you get a patent and yeah, nobody does anything with it, but, but, uh, but so it's actually in hardware. Um, and, you know, we, yeah, we had, we had, you know, every year there was a recognition party for all the patent, you know, new patent holders and, yeah, I did get, you know, I did get some, some, some money, you know, for, 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 for the patents, you know, um, and they have it at Xilinx, they have a big wall in the hallways, uh, some of the big hallways, they have like all their patents I've lined seen, up. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's quite impressive. Yeah, I got a, when I filed my patent, I got a pen, I think, from, my, from the company I did it for as such. So it's a good, it's, it's, it's nice that other people. Uh, uh, doing that. So you worked out. So you had Xilinx 25, 25 years. You know, you, you went, you went through it all. I mean, you must have seen some quite significant changes in that time. So when did you leave? Two thousand and sixteen, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of in the valley here. It's kind of unheard of that people stick around in a company for you know 25 years. Mostly, you know, most of the time, people are jumping. You know, every three to five years, they're they're going somewhere new. And honestly, every three to five years or so, I would like look around and go, "All right, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should, you know, go jump to another company and see about, you know, trying something else, and maybe that would help my career." And but. But because Xilinx was just on such the cutting edge of technology, um, it never it never got boring, and and I was able to do a lot of things. I, I started out in the in the applications team, and kind of design center, um, and so you know did my share of picking up the phone saying hello Xilinx, what how can I help you? And somebody says I'm not my design's not meeting timing, you know, or or I've got a race condition, or you know. My flip flops aren't working and stuff like that. But but I also you know the, those first few years um, was in a design center, so I got to do some designs for hire, um, and so you know people would send in their specifications of some crazy thing. One of one of the, there were two projects that, that I remember. One was a, was basically a, a a a painting system for like automotive painting. And they wanted they they had they had the cars coming down through and they were having all the paint systems come on and they had all these sensors and they just wanted to like automate the whole thing and so, you know, it wasn't a super complex design but but uh, but we implemented it with an FPGA and 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 uh, and they had it running. I had another system where they wouldn't tell us anything about what they were actually doing. You, you probably you probably you know had had examples of of, of contract work where where it's you know. Military, military work. They don't say a word, but it's like, but we need it to do this, and um, and it was basically a video system that that had to collect this video and then get in a buffer and then you know ship it off through through a, 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 a radio, you know, off. And they said, and it has to be live for uh, up to two minutes. And I'm like, wait, what? You want a radio system that captures video, that transmits, and it only has to operate for two minutes? And I'm thinking about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, that that's a missile. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right I, I do some. I've done, I, was, I mean, I've done a lot of background in sort of the defense industry, but I did, I did some work last year with a client, and I was doing some high-level synthesis work for them. And they were like, we can tell you what it is, but we have to get you cleared. We have to get you cleared again. You have to go through all the clearance programs. I'm like. No, 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 no. Just don't tell me what it is, and I'll just do. The, I'll just do this. But, but you can't, you can't hide it really. When doing some of the things like it's, it's got to last for two minutes, so it's got yeah. to be thousand frames per second. He's like, oh, I've just worked out what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you know, then I worked in the uh, in in an IP organization with uh, there were some early early logic blocks and and basically high level kind of synthesis construction parameterized modules that would build up. You know things because we went from a we went from you know hand placing. <laughs> In fact, you know here I've got the uh, the the very first the very first uh, uh, chip um, that Xilinx did. It's it's actually the fab was like MMI um, built built this chip and and it's it's a it's a 64 by 64 CLB array, right? So there was there That's was 64. One of, the, one of the first ones then, yeah. That must be yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and you could you could hand place that, you could hand route that, you could you know configure all the logic. Uh, but by the time I left, you know we had millions and millions of CLBs and flip flops and 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 like there's no way. And so you know in my transition, you know I, I worked on a lot of um, you know software modules, automated you know building building you know um, just logic blocks and 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 synthesizing things, and then. About halfway through my career, I kind of crossed over to the dark side, and went went to marketing, um, and, and it was technical marketing. So I actually, you know, wasn't doing the traditional marketing. It was still really product specification, really looking at, you know, what the customers wanted, really working closely with the engineers and hardware. Um, but I, but I, but I was there at the beginning with with Microblaze, and I did Microblaze marketing and. And uh, did a lot of Microblaze designs, and did a lot of you know how-to videos with with, with doing Microblaze. Um, and then at the end of my career, I kind of transitioned into basically the boards and kits um, side of the house. And and uh, we had a small team, about four four of us that 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 basically did all the all the boards and kits for Xilinx. So 
Um, and I started that with the Spartan family and, and Vertex family and, and, uh, and, and, uh, the zinc, the zinc was all the zinc boards, early zinc boards were all my, my, uh, my boards. And, and, uh, so that, that was fun and did a lot of hardware, learned, learned a lot about PCB manufacturing and, and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a good, it's a different art that PCB manufacture, you know, the schematic capture PCB design, you know, it's, it's, uh, it is a, uh, it is a different sort of skill set. So that brings you to the end of sort of your, you know, your your Xilinx career and a very bit. It must be quite a journey, you know. So like I say, start out with sixty four by sixty four and and end up looking at a looking at a zinc with an with an R nine process A nine processes in there and all those yeah. things and just looking at what you could. I mean, that that's a. I mean, as a user, that's been, it's been a hell of a journey over the last twenty years. You know, over the last twenty five years, it must to be actually an insider. It must have been must have been phenomenal. But now, so now you're a teacher. Yeah. So, and that no, was... so what led that change from <laughs> engineer and, and marketing engineer to um, to becoming a teacher? How how yeah. what was that journey involved? Well, it was it was all about the pay. I you know teachers get paid. That <laughs> oh, get paid I'm sure I'm I'm sure it was all about. I'm, I'm sure you took a big pay cut. I'm sure. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> yeah, you know it, it's interesting. I, I always I was always interested in teaching, and in fact at Xilinx, you know I was. I, you know, especially in my marketing role, a lot of a lot of the things that I did there was actually training, mm -hmm. FAA training. You know, really deep dives into how to use the products and things like that. And so I always enjoyed that, just that ability to teach people things and and, and learn stuff. But um, the last number of years at Xilinx, I actually would would volunteer at a couple of the schools, uh, local schools here, and um, the school that I'm at right now. Um, Silicon Valley CTE. I'll, I'll tell you more about that. It's career technical education school, though, so it's it's not a traditional high school. Um, but uh, so explain that a little bit. What's because obviously I'm from sort of Europe, so I, I don't yeah. I understand a little bit about the American school system, but perhaps perhaps not so much about what a career technical education school is. Yeah. So so this school is it, it, it's it's more about the trades. And um, and so, you know, they actually have, you know, they have a they have a dental program. They have an automotive program. They have a welding program. Um, you know, they've got a veterinary program. Um, and then it's technology ones. They have a they have a program that's specifically for um, like animation. They've got one in film and arts. Uh, they, they have like a cybersecurity networking and then and then um, they started and that's where I came in. They started a uh, uh, I taught my first year here five years ago. I taught cybersecurity okay. and then and then the second year. And then the reason I came was because they were starting a mechatronics program. And so I got to be able to define their mechatronics program from scratch. But the way it works is that it's all hands on. Um, you know, we've got a big lab. Uh, space and 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 so how it works is that we work with all the, the the districts around us. So there's about 40 high schools, about six districts, and we work with all of those schools. And they'll send their students in the morning or the afternoon. So I have two classes, but they're three hours long. Okay. Every day, same students, three hours long, and uh, and so so we have this time to really really dig into stuff, and it's just an extension. It's an extension of their high school classes, right? So they just come over to our school and 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 take take these classes. But but what was interesting that the, the the journey. Oh, here's the bell. Hang on, wait for it. All right. Even even though I don't have students in my class right now, uh, we'll we'll talk we'll talk about you know how the pandemic's affected school in a second. But but the journey, right? How did I go from Xilinx to to teaching? Well. I was I was kind of getting a little restless and I was like, I, I want to do something different, completely different. But I had been working with. Um, uh, so one of the companies that Xilinx worked with was Digilent and they uh, I they did a bunch really of the well, yeah. boards. Yeah. And and so and so they were actually having a design contest uh, that they were running and they called me up one day and said, hey, Jim, you know, we're doing this contest and it's, you know, it's a bunch of the people are using zinc and stuff. And it'd be really great to have someone from Xilinx 
come be a judge at our design contest. And I'm like, I'm totally down. You know, I love that. You know, I'd love to speak to the students. And and because most of the students in the design contest were some were high school, but mostly were, were college. And, uh, and I said, great, I'm down. When, when and where is it? And they said, well, it's in, it's in about a month and it's in Romania. And I went, <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. I don't know if Xilinx would actually, you know, I want to come, but I don't know yeah. if Xilinx will pay for me to go to Romania, right? And I couldn't afford it myself. Um, and, uh, and they said, no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll actually pay for the, the, the flight and we're staying at this, the, one of the professor's homes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I worked a deal out with Xilinx where I ended up, you know, basically going to Germany and a couple other places and, you know, visiting Bosch and, you know, doing, yeah, doing some real see work. Some, see some customers and such like, yeah. yeah. Doing, doing some real work. And then at the end of the week, I, I ended up in Romania and, and, uh, and did this. And, and at the same time, during the summer times, I'd actually come to this school, um, Silicon Valley Career Technical Education, and done some summer workshops. So I'd, I'd taught some C++ classes and we'd played with Arduinos and, and things like that. And so I already kind of had this feel like, you know, I want to get into this space with students yeah. and, and really kind of give back, you know, some of the engineering that I'd learned. And when I got back from that trip from Romania, I was like, you know what? I want I want to I want to I want to do this full time. I want to I want to engage with students full time. And so, of course, the first thing I did was I, I connected back up with with all the folks at Digital and I said, hey, you know, can I can I come over and work in your you know, in your in your education department? And they're like, man, we would love to have you. But like we just you know, we just can't. And I'm like, ah, and there was a job opening here at this school that I'd been kind of watching and uh, and then um, they, they just had me in for an interview to talk about stuff. And, they, and then they explained to me that they were going to be doing this mechatronics program. And I went, I want to do that. Of course, what? then I had to go back and <laughs> talk to my wife, figure out, like, can we actually do this? Because, yeah, it was, a, you know, a quarter of the pay. Um, you know, the joke, the joke is that, you know, everybody's saying that there's a shortage of teachers. And... And it's not a shortage of teachers. It's a shortage of people who want to work for, you know, $37,000 a year. Right? Yeah. It's, it's quite, I, yeah, it's quite a shortage. I would imagine it's the salaries are uh, very similar across the, across <clears> the, <throat> the teachers. So, so you went from, so you, so you go from Xilinx to uh, Silicon, Silicon Valley Career Technical Education. So you went from being an engineer to, uh, to, to being an educator. Did you have to do any qualifications or additional teaching or anything for that? Did you have to go to college or night school to get some? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, you need like a, what they call a PGCE, like a certificate of education so that you can actually teach. Yeah, they, so so uh, here in the United States, there's, there's, there's two ways, right? You can go and get your bachelor's in education mm -hmm. and get like a single subject teacher, like just you know, English teacher, physics teacher or something. And then you can work in the, uh, uh, work in the, in the, in the school industry, but for career technical education, um, there it's basically a one year class, a one year program where you, you've got to take a, take a, take a couple classes that are, that basically teach you how to be a teacher, Yes. but then they also, they also take your work experience. And so I could show that that I was qualified to teach, you know, engineering, um, technology program, and with my with my experience, and so I did. But I did have to get a basically it's a CTE credential, um, and it's you know by the, it's a state credential um, uh, here, so so that I can teach, um, and so I can teach. It, it limits on on some of the places I can actually teach. But if they have any kind of career technical education program, I can I can teach in those in those schools. Interesting. So so you mentioned your mechatronics program. So what is I think I've got a vague idea. What is you know what is mechatronics and and what do you really do? What do you do with your what do you do with your students to sort of engage them and grasp them? Because we were talking about this before we start before we start. You know, we need we need young engineers. You know, we need people interested in in, in understanding. Uh, technology you know the last thing the world needs is more people with mbas we need more engineers and scientists right. 
and such like. So, so can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the way I sell my class to the students, right, new students coming in, I say it's mechatronics. It's mecha for mechanical engineering and tronics for electronics. And it's really that blending of, you know, electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. And there's that that need for someone who can actually understand and bridge bridge that gap. And so I tell them, I say, so it's it's mecha and tronics. When you mash those together, you get fire breathing robots. And this is what you build with them. So you build fire breathing robots, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, what's what's interesting is that you know, unlike a traditional high school class, like you know, a physics class, a physics class, you know, they they hand you a, a, a textbook and it's like, okay, we're gonna be teaching this textbook and this is what we're gonna be learning. For me, I, I actually got to be able to design you know, this class, like it, whatever I wanted to do. And honestly, my administration, they have no idea what I, what I do in my class. Um, but I did, I went through a process to like define course outlines. So, you know, we, we learn, we learn ACDC circuits. Um, and so, you know, resistors, capacitors, transistors, and series parallel circuits, and they learn how to use a multimeter. I got my analog, my little yeah. analog meter, <laughs> meter back here. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll let them play with the, you know, analog stuff as well. Um, but, uh, but so, you know, they'll learn, we'll learn, we'll learn basic electronics. Um, I mean, the first day we are got a breadboard out and a switch and an LED and, you know, they, they learn how to do that like first day, hands on. Um, and then we'll learn digital logic. So AND gates and OR gates and, you know, discrete chips and, and, uh, and, 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 and learn basic basics of, 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 of that. Um, and then, and then everything else is just like hands on. So, you know, one of the, one of the, the projects that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do is play with, I can't, can't see that very well, but like an Arduino. Is that a, yeah, okay. Yeah, got a little a, Arduino. That, are they tracks on the bottom of that? Like a track, track drive? Yeah, ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, we'll do stuff with an Arduino and I'll teach them C++. So we'll, First semester, part of first semester, we learned C++, and then, then later and the rest of the next semester, because it's a whole year program, mm -hmm. uh, we'll learn Python. And for me, the language is not so important, but really it's the hardware, right? So I teach C++ first because I want to play with an Arduino. And so we learn about Arduinos, we learn about IOs, and really it's it's connecting sensors uh, and 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 programs and then some actuator right so you can you can see something happen in the world and you can make something happen in the world right uh, and then we'll do stuff with with python and i and i've got raspberry pis and i just uh i just uh i have a friend who it's always good to have friends um i have a friend who works uh, over at nvidia and oh, yeah. uh and we came came up with a program where i actually now have a classroom set of of um, Jets and Nanos. And, oh, excellent. And we're going to be doing some stuff with Jets and Nanos. And in fact, that's that's really what's going to happen here. On the top of this is going to be a Jets and Nano and a camera. And we're going to basically do autonomous autonomous driving and uh, and, and and do some stuff with, you know, tens, run, TensorFlow and, you know, all kinds yeah. of stuff. Yeah. yeah they're, quite, they're quite nice, those Jets and Nano. I've got one. I've got one sat just just here that I've still that I've still not turned on. But they are they are really quite an interesting little dev board and development kit, I think, for a lot yeah. of uh, and particularly for like helping students get up and running, I think it'd be quite quite exciting. Yeah. No, and and, and that's a thing, right? I, I you know, I lecture, but like one of the things I do in my class is is what we call robot club. <laughs> and I just do it in class. It's not after school, it's like in class, like Every Wednesday, half a Friday, you know, we're doing Robot Club, and they and they have to come up with you know some project that they're that they're working on. Um, you know, one of my my students every year they ask me, you know, when we talk about robots, they're like, "Oh, can we do BattleBots?" And I'm like, "Oh, BattleBots, man! I don't, 
I don't want to destroy all my all my robots. I don't want to destroy what you've created here. But by, but by the time that they've built it and they've struggled for it, hopefully they'll not want to destroy it either. Yeah, exactly. But so now my plan is, and I, you know, I've got some grant money. I'm spending money right now to do this so that this year and next year, basically we're going to get, um, you know, 60, 60 little robots like this. Okay. Right. And, and we're going to set it up so they have their jets and nanos on there and they got a camera and we'll do some machine learning and we'll look at something where we're going to 3d print some little clips uh to hold a piece of foil tin foil okay right and that'll be actually a circuit will be across that tin foil yep right and so the robot will know if its circuit is intact and we'll have like four of them around the robot and the machine learning the machine vision will be can you find and recognize that these, this little bit of foil, foil, right? And then we'll do cardboard. We'll do cardboard battle bots where the weapons will be cardboard, and it just and, knock out the. And they just have to cut that, cut that piece of piece of foil, and then that will damage your your opponent, and uh, and eventually you win because they can't move or something, yeah. right? That's a, that's actually a really great idea. That's a really great idea. I think they'll I think they'll like. Uh, I think they'll like that quite a, quite a lot. So this is this is really you know this is really quite interesting because you've got all these students and you've got so that I presume they're sort of if you are saying high school they're sort of 17, 18 ish year old is that is that the right sort of so I mean do many of these progress on to follow an engineering career and sort of start doing engineering at university or looking <clears> for sort of yeah um, it's it's a it's a new program this is my this is my fourth year teaching uh -huh. uh, mechatronics. And my students, my students come from, you know, all of all of around Silicon Valley, mostly San Jose, kind of kind of Santa Clara area here in the in the valley. And um, and they come from challenging environments. Right. And most of my students, they have never programmed anything. They've never seen a 3D printer. Uh, they have never done any electronics. They come into my class like. This might be fun, but I have no idea what's 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 going on. And my my goal, my hope for them, right? Two things happen. Number one, they go, eh, not not really that. It, it was fun, but like I'm not interested in doing this. But number two, I have students who like they say at the end of the year, they're like, I actually really like programming. I, I'm actually good at it. I I actually can do this, right? Or someone you know, I've got a student who's now actually, they were an intern and actually now have a job at a place that basically is a, you know, 3D print shop, right? But but they got that love of that technology from my class, right? class. Yeah. playing with 3D printers, realizing that they were really good at like imagining spatial, you know, stuff and being able to do designs and, and, uh, and, and do that. And so, you know, I'm all about trying to get my students, you know, into internships and and uh, and opportunities and and i would say you know i mean my i got students who come into my class and they have no idea what they're going to do after high school they have just no idea some it's the first time that anyone in their family's even gone to college um and uh and and i've got students who like you know they when they get out of my class they're like i'm gonna go do engineering so i've got students who now are you know second third year of of uh, of an engineering program either electrical engineering or mechanical engineering mechatronics there's some good at colleges around here that have really good mechatronics programs or even computer science and so so yeah my, I, mean, I really feel like my role is to like expand the horizons of some of these kids to to realize that yes they can in fact participate in the high-tech world that's where they live right that's that's excellent that's that's really good I'm, I'm really nice to see that you know the people are following on and they're they're following their career paths and it's you know it's inspiring the next generation because we need like i say you know we need those younger engineers so the pandemic must have been because this is a really hands-on class you know it's it's not yeah, like yeah. you know where you can sit at home and write bhdl or a little bit of c or thing you know it's really hands-on class so I mean, I know it varies around the world as where you are, but, you know, I mean, in California, you've had quite a long stay at home. I think they call it in, in, in California. Yeah. You know, the, 
in the UK where where sort of have a similar similar thing. So how do you how do you address this? How do you how do you go about teaching this in the in the sort of pandemic? Yeah, so I, I have a love hate relationship with with uh, with this distance learning that we've been we've been doing, because yeah, it was it was you know last you know last February March right, and what was interesting was so at the time uh, last year in February I had a, another friend of mine always helps to have friends, um, he was actually helping me in my class where we were actually building a single board computer. Uh, basically a super simple machine right it would it could it could add and subtract and it could jump and store you know but but it was just basically a little a little risk processor but all from scratch so it was 15 breadboards and all the discrete chips you know building building everything from scratch it was like four it was a four bit little four bit uh uh machine and he was really focused on like, okay, this pandemic and things are going to go crazy here and we need to be careful. And, and we we're already like, my students would come in and it's like, okay, go wash your hands, you know, sit down, everybody's starting to wear masks. And, and I told my administration, I said, look, we've got a plan for like not having school. School is going to be, we're going to be, we're not going to, in two, three weeks, four weeks, right? We're not going to have school. And they're like, no. And a couple other teachers like, no, it'll, it'll, we, we, it'll be, we'll figure it out. And, and one of the teachers said, I'll bet you, I'll bet you a hundred dollars that, you know, we'll still be in school, you know, in, until the end. And I'm like, let's make it $10 because I knew I was going to win that bet. Yeah. And, and, and two weeks later, you know, we were, we were out of school. And so I went from having a full classroom of students to no students. And, and what we did, my friend and I, we actually hit it up the rest of that project so all the breadboards and all the devices and we sent those kits home with the kids um and uh you know they went home with a digital multimeter and and everything and and over zoom right we would have lectures and we would show stuff and i would you know have my 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 project and i would have a camera that could show my stuff and, down and we it. could debug a lot of things yeah and we could debug a lot of things and so uh, I would say more than half of my students actually finished that project and got their got their little little uh, computer computer running. That's really um, good. And then this, yeah. And and this year uh, at the start of the year, so last last you know August, um, I was in I was in in class you know and basically you know got got bins of material uh, put together and I sent home. A digital multimeter, breadboards, bunch of wires, bunch of components, you know, LEDs, resistors, transistors, you know, the whole little bit. And I was able to actually do about 60% of my actual electronics labs that, that we would have normally done in class. Now, it's terrible, though, because like someone has trouble, you, you can't, you can't, it's hard to debug it. You can't just um, go, oh, well, and, this, 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 and this, can you? Yeah, it's, it's. Yeah, I had, you know, have them send me a lot of high res pictures, you know, to, to, and then the next day I could go, oh, hey, no, I think this is like the wrong place. And the other thing that we really struggle with is like everybody's got different technology, right? Mm -hmm. Some students, they don't even have a computer. They've got, a, they've got a Chromebook that they got, got from their school, and that's yeah. the only. You know, technology, they got a phone and a Chromebook. And so I actually had to make it so that like all my Raspberry Pi labs, all my Arduino stuff, it all had to work with a Chromebook, with a Mac, with a Windows machine, Linux machine. And uh, and so for a teacher, it just was really hard. You know, I would I, I have basically Monday through Thursday, I, I do class. I do a live class for about an hour and a half twice a day. So. So two, two different classes, about an hour and a half. And, you know, we, we do coding and we do some electronics and now they're getting their raspberry Pis and they're going to be playing with raspberry Pis. And, uh, and, 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 but what's great is that actually in, in a week and a half, I'm getting students back oh, that's um, in small yeah. groups, in small groups. So I'm going to have like five students uh, once a week 
they're going to come to school and then the rest of the week they'll still be home. And so yeah. different groups of students. So I'll get all my students. Um, and my plan right now is, uh, you know, because a lot of the teachers are like, oh, yeah, we're just going to lecture. We're still going to do, you know, these things. And I'm like, no. When my students are in my classroom, you know, they are they are working on, you know, they're working on their robot. Uh, they are they are working on, you know, a, whatever project that they're that they're doing. Heck, I even, you know, I've got a I've got a uh, I took a keyboard apart. Uh, this is basically <laughs> just the end of a keyboard, right? And and people are like, wait, that's the keyboard? It's like, yeah, that's the keyboard. It just happens to connect to all the keys. Although, yeah. And I mean, one of the projects I want to do my, for myself is just have a little, you know, five buttons that I can map to keys and then I can plug it in and then I can actually interface with software and go, you know, without without looking down, I can I can switch a camera, you know, because a lot of times you know I'm like, oh let me fix that. Oh let me fix that, right? I've got to type on a keyboard <laughs> yeah, and now I can kind of reach out. I can just reach out and push the button, you know, and things will change. Just so it's all going to be all hands on. I'm I'm not going to be lecturing you know, anymore when the kids are in class, they're, they're, we're going to, we're going to just, they're going to have a robot club project and they're going to be working on, you know, robots. Um, I even have, I even have in the back of my room, I've got a, uh, a, a four by six board that we're going to put a model railroad train track on. Yeah, I was in touch about it. So you're talking about a model railroad with zombie theme or something. Like yeah. So uh, we're, we're going to make it artistic. We're going to make a, a little diorama and it's going to be like zombie themed, you know, crashed helicopter and, you know, apocalypse. But yeah. but at the same time, my plan is to actually use this to, to teach, you know, machine learning and, and, and other things. Because on the train, so, so number one, they build the train. So they're all the, just the basic electronics of having the trains work and having little lights and having, you know, all, all the stuff that normally goes into, you know, building a train track. But at the same time, at the top of it, I'm going to put, you know, up, up, up about three feet, I'm going to put an XY, XY, uh, basically table, right? So I'm going to be able to move a camera around, you know, anywhere on that board, yeah. XY, right? So then now that, now I can have it so that we, we, we write some software to do machine vision and be able to, to, to see trains, right? Mm -hmm. So now you can actually go, okay, there's a train. Oh, it's moving. Okay, go follow it. Yeah, you know, the train. yeah it works. And, oh, and do awesome. stuff like that. Um, and, and I can do things like put a, put a little, you know, nine axis, you know, accelerometer, yaw, roll and pitch onto the train. And then they can actually collect data. So they connect that up to say Wi-Fi and have it, you know, they collect a bunch of data and they could actually plot the the shape of the track based on the data they collect rather than just looking at the track. Looking, looking down at it. Yeah, that is so it's just like all kinds of just data management kind of kind of things. And you know, and then of course they get have fun, you know, building a building a model railroad, but but they also are gonna be learning, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning and machine vision and you know, all kinds of things like that. So like, like I said, my, my, my administration just have like no idea what I do and any crazy idea. I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and you know, I get to do it. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, That sounds like, I think that's going to really inspire the kids, you know, and I think that'll really grab their attention, you know, the, uh, and, it, and it, like you say, it pulls in so much, you know, vision, AI, you know, processing data, you know, data is data's like, data is like gold in the, uh, in the world these days. So actually, one of the somebody in the comments, Yuan's, just said that uh, you know he's a he's a teacher as well, and he's having the same uh, the same issues as you. I think I think you know, to be fair, you know, I think teachers have done a great job this last uh, this last year or so, keeping all the kids going and, and infused. And certainly, certainly in the UK, I think most people have. I mean, schools have just opened, literally on Monday. Schools just opened back up, and I think there was a collective sigh of relief from all the parents that had been homeschooled <laughs> yeah, as the kids yeah. went as the kids <laughs> went back. Uh, no, so, uh, exactly. Well, and, and, and really, this has highlighted, you know, just the way that we teach and, and what works for some students and what doesn't work for other students. And, and I think, you know, when we when we get past all of this, teachers just really need to take like all the good things they learned about, you know, kind of flipping your classroom, having a lot more videos the kids watch and then just do more hands on when you have them live. And, uh, you know, the other thing that I that I really, you know, think that that we need to do more of is just like get our communities involved. Right. I mean, I have I have a lot of 
you know, network connections of people in this valley. And, um, you know, this last year, I actually got about $37,000 worth of like either grants or donations for different things in my program, right? I mean, I had, you know, I had uh, DuPont and, okay. you know, basically sponsored my classroom and all my students actually got a, a little robot like this, which they now have at home to play with. And, 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 and it's like, you know, as a teacher, you know, I just go find somebody and I like, Hey, you know, you, this is cool. Like the stuff at NVIDIA, it's like, Hey, we should, we should do something where all my students get, you know, a, a, a Jetson Nano and we, and we learn, learn stuff. And they're like, okay, let's do it. And, you know, it just takes a few people to kind of poke a marketing department and then marketing yeah. says, Oh, this would be good. Yeah. We'll be able to like get some social media cred out of this. And I'm like, yeah, you will. And I'll get, you know, I'll get robots and I'll get, you know, hardware and, and, and things like that. So it's mutually, it's mutually beneficial. So we need to talk to, we need to prod Xilinx to get you some pink boards so as, you can, so as your students can. Uh, you know, I actually have, I actually have some pink boards. Uh, that was one of the first things I did a couple years ago was got myself a classroom set. I, I, I do about a week, a week or so worth of, of, of FPGA stuff. I've got so much stuff to do that I have to really kind of focus on what I do. You in on the areas, don't you? Yeah, but I try and expose, try and expose my students to like all this technology, and then if they want, they can actually, you know, really dive in and, and do stuff. Yeah, that's that's really good. So I mean, we're we're nearly at the we're nearly at the hour now, Jim. So it's been it's been real it's been really great for you to come on and for you to talk and explain about you know your career and your uh, and you know your benefit and working with kids and inspiring that next generation and such like. Uh, I mean, next time, actually, you know, next time I'm out there, you know, hopefully the world's going to open up soon and I'm going to be able to get on a plane. So next time I'm out there, I'll come see you and uh, we'll absolutely uh, we'll, I'll, I'll, we can have dinner or something. And I'd love if I got the opportunity and I'd love to talk to your students. about Yeah, it. yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. And anybody, you know, on the chat, yeah. if if anybody's in San Jose, you know, just connect up with me and I'll 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 show you what my classroom's like and what we do and. And hopefully, you know, inspire inspire engineers to like go be mentors, go help in classrooms, go, you know, call in and and do a and do a you know an hour of of you know engineering life with the students because you know it's so beneficial for them to really engage with is, with engineers. And it's one of the most you know I mean we're all engineers on the call. But it's one of the most rewarding careers that there is. You know, you get to work on, you get to work on cool things. You get to see, you get to see interesting things. You get to ch change how the world is, and you know, you get to, you get to travel the world and meet, you get to travel the world and meet people. And as you yeah. say, you know, it's always nice to have friends, and it's, it's one of the best careers there is going. So we do need to, we do need to do that. So look, I'm going to let you go now, and hopefully you're not too late for your first class. Uh, no, no. Next, obviously, it's quite, it's, it's early morning by, uh, early morning by you. But look. Thank you very much for coming on. I really, I really do appreciate it. I think it's been great. I think everybody's uh, had a good time and, and learned a lot. And you know, thank you for. I'm sure. Thank you, you know, for all your efforts in the pandemic of teaching, uh, teaching the kids. And, and such like. Yeah, sure. Adam. No, Adam. It was, it was, it was a great time. I really enjoyed myself. I was, yeah, I've had a great time. I've had a real. The hours always fly when you have some, when you have a fun guest like yourself on set. <laughs> so I, I shall, I shall leave you in peace, and I shall wish you all uh, a a good. March and March and April, and um, keep an eye out for the uh, for the next episode of the uh, of the Embedded Hour. This this is the actually the twelfth one, so it's the last the last of the series that everybody signed up for. So I'm just going to start a uh, start a new get a new series st started now, so as everyone can go we sign up for that as well. So thank you very much, and I will see you all uh, see you all later. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Bye.